Well, folks, there's nothing like a classic, unless a classic gets even better. And I believe that the K-Bar Fighting Utility Knife version and model number 1211 is the best take of the K-Bar line of the original fighting knife that saw action you know, throughout the Pacific and Europe through World War II and has been carried in almost every theater of combat since. So this knife is just a take on that design with some more modern handle materials and some more modern sheath materials. And so today we're gonna walk through this blade. We're gonna talk about the upgrades and what I think those upgrades offer in the sense of durability and comfortability and uh, just what the K-Bar fighting utility knife and particularly this model of 1211 uh, can do and offer and what's the best way to uh, use this and what system works best for this knife. So let's go ahead and start thumping on this guy and see what it can do and discuss the upgrade of this classic and in my opinion, the best version of the K-Bar Fighting Utility Knife. Got the seat belt. Double run of seat belt. Several strands of paracord. Nice. Solid as a rock. No issue whatsoever. Well, folks, so there you have it. You've seen this guy just thumped on. We've used it a ton, not only in utility tasks around the home, going through webbing and paracord and rubber and all kinds of stuff that you would expect to maybe find around a military base or just in a utility task format, survival situation, whatever it may be, but also out in the woods and really thumped on this thing. And I've done a lot of stuff and that's really for me where I see how, that's where I can put the most abuse on a blade is when I do like the batoning, the hacking, the chopping, that type of stuff with a knife so that I can see, hey, how would this hold up to a lot of different abuse, regardless if it's on an army base and a survival situation or out in the woods on a camping trip. Now we have two other K-bars I wanted to run in as we discuss just the blade performance and just who is this knife best suited for. Now what we have here is the K-bar Turok which is new for 2016 I believe and now in early 2017 I'm having a chance to really thump on this thing and this is a great, it could be a tactical knife and also a very good woods knife. This is a, a really nice layout and I'm really digging it a lot. We're gonna have a review on this guy coming up soon. And then down here we have the EK line of knives that has been bought by K-Bar now being reproduced by K-Bar. Uh, all, these are all 1095, these are all um, you know, designed in either a combat utility or in my mind the Turok, more of a woods uh, knife as well. And so that's why I wanted to run these in here so that you can really decide. And as you saw through the performance, I think that the 1211 is best suited for either fighting out of all three of these knives, um, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is what it was partly designed for when the original design came out. It has that guard. It's got a thin blade at 530 seconds of an inch thick overall, which makes it a really good slicer. And it's got that saber grind and then at seven inches overall and then six and a half actual cutting edge makes it a really good knife if you are looking for a larger self-defense you know soldier knife 
and utility tasks. That's really where I believe this knife performs um, and is going to be the perfect niche for you. Now, as I said, because of just some of the designs that we're going to talk about today with ergonomics, the bottom and top guard, no real finger blank or choil there to rest my finger, I can't get really close up on the knife to do finer woods work. It just isn't very comfortable for that. I can do basic woods work, but that's where something like the Turok would be much better suited. There's no top guard. I can rest my finger right there. Very ergonomic, good lockup, and I'm really set and good for a lot of carving tasks if need be. Um, and not to say that the Turok wouldn't be a good combat knife as well. It can do some of those tasks, but this I believe will be better because it's thinner and it has the bottom and top guard. Now to the EK knife. Now we're going to have a review on this one coming up soon. This one is a big no-no. I've had three of these now and two of them back to back have had the guard loosen up right out of the gate. I don't know if you can hear that or see it, but it is wobbling like crazy with the less abuse than what I put on the 1211. So I was going to actually recommend this as possibly a, a, a competitor or even better as a utility combat knife than the 1211. But after having now two of these, talking with K-Bar, this is not covered under warranty. Um, this rattling that I am uh, having with almost zero use on it. I'm very frustrated with this design and cannot recommend this at all to you. And this is going to be a much better, again, utility combat knife as we have seen through the video so far with its utility capability. And again, we'll have a video and we'll go into depth on why this has uh, failed and just some of the, you'll see a lot of the use that I put this through and what has caused this problem that I'm seeing that I think needs to have a total redesign um, with this EK series down here. So with that being said, guys, I just wanted to run in these two other knives because if you're considering the 1211, you're probably looking at these two other K-Bars as well. They're about the same price point. They're about the same size, about the same weight, and they're all made out of US 1095. And so, again, wouldn't recommend this guy at all. If you're looking for a soldier combat utility knife, then I would say that's where the 1211 is really going to shine. And if you're looking for more of a camping utility knife with maybe some tactical um applications, but you think you're going to mostly be using this out in the woods, that's where I think the K-Bar Turok really shines. So there you have it, folks. Now let's go on and see what else this K-Bar 1211 has to offer. So this handle material, in my mind, is much more durable and long-lasting than on the original leather stacked version of this knife. This is Craton, so it still has every dimension that you would expect on the original K-Bar, and it has even the you know ribbing marks, which is really good. You know, it's going to give you really good traction. Very ergonomic, one of the most ergonomic, most comfortable knives I've ever used and ever held. And you can see I wear large size gloves, and I got about a stack and a half off the back end there, and we do have that tang coming out the back now it's an enclosed tang you know so this wouldn't be as robust as some survival knives that you may know like the becker bk7 you know things like that it won't be as robust because it's got a thinner tang overall and then it's got that enclosed tang so that is something to consider this is why this would be more of a utility fighting knife not a survival knife in my mind uh, you could, you know, any knife you have, you could use in a survival situation, but this wouldn't be the ideal blade in today's market. Uh, something to note that we've noticed with round, circular, you know, kind of like broom-handled knives is that if you're doing lots of hand-to-hand -hand combat and you're swinging, you're slashing, you're stabbing, you're going to have to do a lot of that. The knife tends to spin in your hand because it's so rounded. So something that we just kind of noticed over the, the long haul, the Craton, because it's rubberized versus like the leather stacking is better. So it will be more grippy in your hand and won't spin as quickly. But something to consider if you are, you know, a soldier and you're going to use this as a deployment knife that we've just noticed in our testing, just doing hacking and slashing, you know, and, and quick you know, fighting moves, if you will. And I'm not trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I'm not claiming that at all. I'm just saying that's what we've seen and experienced. And then we do have that metal guard, you know, that flares backwards on both, which tends to kind of, it protects your webbing um, on your hand and, you know, protects your knuckle down there. And you're definitely not, if you're stabbing or prying, going to slide up on the blade. I would have liked to have this kind of more flaring out this direction. Uh, so that's just kind of something to note there. And you can get up over it and do some fine cutting, but it's not you know, you're designed to hold it like this and do whatever cutting task you're going to do. Again, that's why you're just not going to get quite the mobility and um, nimbleness in the finer cutting tasks like wood processing that you would with some other knives that are more designed for either survival or bush crafting. So that's why this is kind of a, a utility fighting knife, not a survival knife in my mind. But overall, particularly with the Craton, you're going to get that great impervious to the materials or to the elements basically outside of like throwing it in a fire 
uh, would be the only thing that would cause it to melt. And even then, craton tends to hold up very well. But you know, all the other elements are not going to affect the craton, and it is extremely comfortable in the hand in a hammer grip or in that reverse grip. This sheath is another reason why I think this is the best version of the classic K-Bar. We have a polymer plastic sheath with tons of lashing points, nice drainage hole, I love that. The, the knife is next to silent, that's just some of this plastic banging up against the pommel right here, but super secure in there, one of the best secured sheaths I've ever seen. We got this nice big uh, webbing portion right here that'll fit two inch you know, tactical belts. We have a little attachment here for different lashing options as well. Nice button snap right here, just kind of as an extra retention point. And then a locking mechanism that goes around the guard. So it clicks into place like that. And then you just flex this back portion right here and pull to pull the blade out. Ambidextrous as well, so you lefties will love that. And everything that uh, you'd expect from something designed like this. And I think is uh, much more capable and just much more enjoyable than just the classic leather, you know, that's going to wear out over time. It's going to retain water uh, and is just doesn't give you the lashing options that this offers you. So particularly you soldiers, you people who are looking at this knife as possibly a deployment knife. This is the best version, in my opinion, with, again, the stacked handles that we've discussed and the sheath going with the craton and then the polymer plastic, more durable and will uh, give you a lot more lashing options on LBE systems. So great sheath option for this particular model. All right, so time to talk price point here on the knife. Uh, I've seen these go anyway from about 60 to 70 bucks. So right in that price range, you know, you are getting that classic style combat knife, but then you are getting those upgraded handles to Craton, which will be a lot more resistant to the elements than the leather stacking. It's not as classic, but it's much more durable and will last longer. And then you are getting that polymer sheath that is fantastic. I mean, there's no need for, in my mind, to upgrade to like a form of Kydex or something like that. and gives you a lot more lashing options than the original leather sheath. So for that price, if you are looking for either classic or just combat style knives, this is the one, again, that I would go with. And for that price point, you're getting that USA made 1095 K-Bar name. You can't go wrong. So we will have links in the description below over to Amazon. If you guys are interested in that, that's always a great way to help support the channel is by using those hyperlinks. And even if you're not really interested in this K-Bar and maybe you're interested in any other item at all, uh, if you just use those hyperlinks, it'll take you over to Amazon, then you can search whatever you want and we'll still get a kickback from the things that you purchase over the next 48 hours. So it's a huge way to help support the channel and keep us purchasing gear and doing the reviews that you guys see here. And I wanna thank you guys for always using those links. You guys are awesome for doing that. So thank you so much for using our hyperlinks that we offer. And again, about 60 to 70 bucks on this cable. Well, folks, there you have it. We've talked about, in my opinion, the best version that has come into existence to date on the original design of the K-Bar Fighting Utility Knife. I wanna thank you for coming over here today. And just as I kind of wrap this up, as I've said throughout the video, I think this is the best version that you can get, the best take um, of this design. And if you are looking for that full-size combat utility blade, you want that capability, uh, this is gonna, I believe, offer you a ton in not only capability, durability, and just performance. And you know, you're gonna be also carrying, in a sense, a piece of history because it's got all of the same the, the same heart as the original, just with uh, an outer, you know, part of it being upgraded and more modern. So uh, hopefully this really helps you guys out with your purchasing decisions on whether or not this is the knife to uh, employ in one of your systems of use and uh, just helping you with your purchasing decisions. As always, thank you so much for coming over here and checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts on this knife and any questions you may have, I'll do my best to answer in the comments below. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.